What's up guys, JC once again, back another video for you guys today and welcome to an all new video for 2023. This is not an update video, this is a very exciting, something I've been long awaited, very much anticipated. Today I share with you my top 20 favourite movies of all time. This is something I've wanted to do on this channel for a very long time. I might have done it on a stream or a hangout a long time ago on my original channel, Movie Man Jace, but today's the day I do it here. I actually made a bit of a deal with my buddy Tim. If he did a video on his channel, his top 20, I had to do one, so he did. I'll leave the link below. And who knows, at the end of the video, I might shout out a couple of you guys to do this because it's something really uh, interesting and exciting because everyone has different lists. That's what makes it really interesting. And I enjoy these type of videos. I might do, this might spawn a bit of a series where I do other top 20s or top 10s throughout the year. So let me know some suggestions. I'd love to do some of that because I can't do update videos all the time. I know I have a collection, complete collection video to do very soon. And yeah, I want to do a little bit more on this channel, especially focusing more on the movies than just the pickups and things like that. So very excited. Here we are, Jace's top 20 favorite movies of all time. Okay, the first movie on this list is none other than Midnight Cowboy, 1969, starring John Voight, Dustin Hoffman. Interesting story about this movie. Long ago, I recorded this in my early 20s on VHS, I'm thinking it was a Western, and naturally I got a big surprise when I found out exactly what it's about. Of course, it's about Joe Buck, John Voight's character, who's a young man in Texas who's a dishwasher and wants to go to New York to find a better life for himself and become this male prostitute hustler. Uh, when he gets up there, it's not as he expected, though. Uh, life is a little different up in New York, and he ends up meeting Rizzo Ratso, uh, Dustin Hoffman, great Dustin Hoffman character. And uh, at first they form this uneasy alliance because uh, they're not too sure about each other, but eventually they form this great friendship. And they have to rely on each other to survive just to get food and scrape at the bottom of the barrel and try and live out this New York dream as it's proposed in this movie. But yeah, great, great film. Uh, this was actually the very first X-rated movie that won Best Picture back in 1969. For today's standards, this is quite tame, but back then it was quite graphic and obscene in some places. But uh yeah, just, I don't know, this movie just has that feel to me. I can watch it any time of the day or night, any time of the year. I love the soundtrack. I just love the sort of journey they go through within New York. And obviously Dustin Hoffman, as his health deteriorates, uh, what John Voight starts doing for him and how their friendship expands. And it's just a beautiful, well-made movie, uh, wonderfully shot and... I've loved this movie from the day one and the criterion is excellent and I highly recommend watching this movie if you haven't. That is Midnight Cowboy. Okay, so the next movie on this list is Good Time 2017, directed by the Safdie brothers, starring Robert Patterson in one of his best movies of all time, in my opinion. Uh, this was my introduction to the Safety Brothers, and I just love their fast-paced, edge-of-the-seat through rides that they create. Um, this movie has it all. It's basically like a crime heist movie. Uh, Robert Patterson is the older brother of a disabled guy. That's Ben Safty, and they pull off this bank heist that unfortunately goes wrong. And for the rest of the movie, they're just trying to escape the authorities uh, and get out of the situation. That's basically it. And... It's basically set on all on one night um, for the most part, and I love movies like that. I find it adds to the tension and the sort of stakes. Uh, well, that's what I love about this film, and the sound score is brilliant. Rob Patterson just plays that vulnerable character so well. Um, even though he's kind of bad, he's doing it for the right reasons to try and help his brother out, and uh, yeah, just excellent. Um, Cinematography-wise, brilliant as always, and this is just one of those movies I've come back to so many times and love it. So brilliant film, that is good time. Okay, so now we come on to the very first Western in this list. That is Paul Newman, Robert Redford in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, 1969, directed by George Roy Hill. And the reason why this is one of my favorite Westerns of all time and movies of all time is it just has a blend of everything. You get the gunfights, the drama, the romance, the chases, and also just the lighter comedy side as well. Uh, Something about these two, the chemistry between Paul Newman and Robert Redford and everything about this movie is about that. It, it honestly is. Um, 
Butch and Sundance are train robbers and they're likable outlaws. That's the interesting part about this movie. They're outlaws on the run from authorities, which leads them to eventually go to Bolivia um, in the hope of becoming straight. But that doesn't go too well for too long and they get that sort of itch to get back in the thrill of bank robbery and uh, leads to unfortunate consequences, if you know what I mean. But yeah, this is just a fun Western, a movie you can watch any time. Uh, I really wish these two did more together because it would have been great to see them more on the screen. They also did The Sting, but I would love to see a couple more movies of these two. Fantastic movie, great Western, and very enjoyable. Okay, so the next one is one of my great friend's favourite movies. That is Scarface, 1983, directed by Brian De Palma starring the legendary actor Al Pacino in one of his best roles of all time and one of my favourites. Could have picked many of his movies, but this one I always come back to. Scarface just has all, all of it for me. The characters, the humour, crime. It's about a Tony Montana, the rise to power. It's all about power, wealth, passion. And, yeah, it's just a fantastic movie. Brian De Palma's very best, in my opinion. Tony Montana is an immigrant who comes to America to create a better life for himself and become this all-conquering drug lord. And, yeah, Al Pacino's acting is fantastic. This was actually based on a 1932 movie, Paul Muni. Um, this movie's a lot better than that, in my opinion. Michelle Pfeiffer's great in it and all the side characters – and just something about it is you just can come back to all the time. Even though it's three hours long, the pacing is brilliant, music wonderfully in each scene, and there's so many great little dialogues that we all love on the Hangout. So got to have this in this list, Scarface, Al Pacino. The next movie is one of the best action movies of all time. Predator, 1987, directed by John Mateen, starring the legendary action actor Arnold Schwarzenegger. I could have picked many of his movies in this list, but this one is my all-time favourite. I've come back to this movie many, many times over the years. I usually watch it once or twice a year, and I just love it. I love the camaraderie between all the other characters. you got Carl Weathers, Jesse Ventura, Bill Duke, and, yeah, I just love the action, the mysterious surrounding the Predator, what is it when you first saw this movie? And yeah, just so much rewatchability about this. The action, the great cheesy lines from Arnie as always, and something haunting about this movie as well. And I think that goes with the score. The Alan Silvestri score is brilliant in this. So yeah, this really holds up today for action movie standards. Um, yeah, you can't go wrong with Predator. I know it spawned a lot of unnecessary sequels in a way, but this one stands on its own one of the best predator okay the next movie on this list is an interesting one one that i just watched again recently and that is prisoners 2013 directed by Denine valenu starring hugh jackman jake gyllenhaal paul dano terence howard and viola davis Really interesting movie, this one. I love crime dramas. I love movies that has twists and towels and a bit of a dark edge to it, and this is perfect for me. This is all about uh, Terrence Howard and Hugh Jackman's daughters go missing, and for the rest of the movie, it's high stakes, high tension of Hugh Jackman trying to find them. Jake Gyllenhaal plays the great detective who is on the case looking for the daughters, and it's just brilliant. It has that cat and mouse game in there. Really violent and dark in some places, especially the scenes of Paul Dano, who acts brilliantly in this movie. And there's something about this film that has that kind of uh, sinister edge and that sort of line that uh, Hugh Jackman character crosses that I won't speak about, but you know what I'm talking about if you've seen the movie. So, yeah, this is probably one of the best crime dramas in the last 10 to 15 years. Uh, I love it, even though it's over two and a half hours well-paced, well-acted, and a brilliant movie overall, Prisoners. Now we come on to one of my favourite war movies of all time, and that is Michael Chimno, The Deer Hunter, 1978, starring Robert De Niro, Christopher Walken, John Cazell, John Savage, and Meryl Streep. And this movie, even though it's not your typical war movie because it focuses more on the psychological and mental impacts of war, 
I just love it. Uh, it's filmed in three parts. Basically, we have John Savage's character's wedding in the first part where we get an introduction of all the characters and we find out that Robert De Niro, Christopher Walken and John Savage's characters are off to Vietnam. The second part of the movie is all the things that happen in Vietnam, including the Russian roulette scene, the infamous scene that uh, really makes this movie so impactful and the acting of De Niro Walken in those scenes uh, is just fantastic. And then we get the third act, which is more the psychological impacts of the war and what happens to Robert De Niro and Christopher Walken and John Savage's characters all had different impacts, both physically and psychologically. And this is just an emotional element to this movie that I really love. And Robert De Niro is just a strong character, even at the beginning when he goes on his deer hunting trips. He's a much stronger character. He's not really interested in all the bullshit that all the friends do, but he just likes them. But... Uh, yeah, just something very interesting about his character. And the sound score to this is amazing. The acting, like I said, cinematography, directing, everything is in here. Um, very powerful movie for me. I've watched it many times, even though it is over three hours. It just has something about it that always hits my heart. That is why I love The Deer Hunter. Now, the next movie is kind of like a war movie, a little bit different from The Deer Hunter, but that it is The Last of the Mohicans, 992, directed by Michael Mann, starring Daniel Day-Lewis, Madeline Stowe, and Wes Doody. And this, again, is an emotional roller coaster journey for me. I just love this movie. The cinematography, the sound score, the acting from Daniel Day-Lewis. He actually trained with... Uh, American Indians for this film and you can see it it's just so fantastic and the love story between him and Madeline Stowe is so believable and just touches my heart this film I don't know I've just loved it from the very beginning when I first saw it um, just the war scenes and the battle scenes towards the end is fantastic that scene when they're walking on that mountain uh, some of the best cinema you ever see uh, just, just a movie that I can come back to any time of the year and yeah I just have this very much attachment to this movie and I think I always will. I think it's to do with my family loving it as well and just something about it that's always hit me. That is The Last of the Mohicans. Okay, the next one is a movie in a similar vein, I guess. That is 2000's Gladiator, directed by Ridley Scott, starring Russell Crowe and Joaquin Phoenix. And this is definitely Russell Crowe's best movie and one of the best sword and sandal type movies of all time. I love this movie from the very day I saw it. The cinematography, the action scenes in the Colosseum are brilliant and it still ages well being 23 years old now and Joaquin Phoenix's character, the villainous Joaquin Phoenix in this one of his earlier roles, just perfect and... Yeah, it has that, again, tearjerker moment for me. I have a few tears in this movie. It's always been like that. This is one of the movies that naturally does make me cry. And, uh, yeah, I have, again, a very much emotional attachment to this movie. Um, I've always loved it. And it's just this Roman general that became a slave. That's what this movie's all about. And, yeah, you won't get much better from Russell Crowe than this. That is Gladiator. Okay, going in a completely different direction now. It is Derek C. Frantz, 2012, The Place Beyond the Pines, starring my boy Ryan Gosling, Eva Mendes, Bradley Cooper, and Ray Liotta. This was an emotional journey for me. I first saw this in a little independent cinema with my brother and father, and I absolutely loved it. I was shocked. I had tears, and just, I was like, wow. This movie has three different parts. The first part focuses on Ryan Gosling's character who is a motorcycle stuntman who finds out he has a young baby and wants to provide for that family. The only way he knows how, though, is to rob banks along with his partner, Ben Middleton's character, who is great in this as well. The second part focuses on Bradley Cooper, who is a police detective who has corruption in his uh, department and is dealing with that and a young family as well. And the third part goes full circle. Bradley Cooper and Ryan Gosling's sons meet in school and it focuses on that father and son relationships and that's what it's all about. Very emotional movie. Ryan Gosling's acting is brilliant in this. This really shows the actor he really is, as is Bradley Cooper. And uh, cinematography-wise, the sound score, the mood, the way it's shot, fantastic. Just as good as Blue Valentine, in my opinion. Um 
this movie will always hold a special place in my heart. I come back to this movie once a year, sometimes twice, and uh, there's always something to it for me. I know a lot of people don't like this as much as me, but will always hold a special place in my heart. That is the place beyond the pines. The next movie is an interesting one. It's one of my favorite dark comedy horror movies, and that is American Psycho 2000, directed by Mary Harron, starring Christian Bauer and one of the most psychotic, social powerful characters in Patrick Bateman you ever see. This is Christian Bauer at his best. Let me make no mistake. I don't know what it is about this movie. I think it's because it appeals to my dark sense of humor. There's just so many laughable moments in this, even though it's meant to be quite serious, but it deals with what's reality and what's not. Uh, I haven't read the book, but most of this movie, Patrick Bateman is doing all these killings, but we don't know if it's real or in his mind. And it deals with the corporate world, the obsessive eighties, as it was as a wall street trader that sort of getting one up on someone else and that sort of arrogance that all these characters have in this movie. And it's just brilliant. I laugh out loud. Some really memorable side characters, Jared Leto's in this, Reese Witherspoon and uh, William Dafoe as the detective is great. I don't know what it is. I've always loved Patrick Bateman. I think he's one of the most fascinating characters of all time. And American Psycho is one of my favorite horror black comedies. The next movie is a genuine classic, a real genuine classic, and that is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, 1975, directed by Milos Foreman, starring the legendary actor Jack Nicholson in his best performance of all time as Randall Patrick McMurphy, a regular guy that ends up in a mental asylum. And this movie has the perfect blend of comedy and tearjerker moments and has the villainous role Louise Fletcher as Nurse Ratchet, one of the best villains of all time. But the side characters are just as good. You've got a young Danny DeVito, uh, Brad Dourif in some of the most memorable roles as well. This movie just has everything for me. I love this movie when I first saw it, and I again watch it every now and again. It's just one of those movies that touches my heart. I have read the book many years ago that uh, focuses more on Will Sampson's character, The Chief. And i got to mention The Chief. I just love his character in this and the sort of relationship he builds with Jack Nicholson's character and uh, I love that scene when uh, they're having the juicy fruit scene if you know what I mean and yeah this generally uh, breaks me up at, towards the end of the movie if you know what I mean and just a one you don't see these movies anymore in cinema you really don't this is cinema at its best it won all the five major Oscars and so it's a genuine classic and if you haven't seen it I don't know what you're doing in your life you're not a real movie person if you haven't seen this movie that is one flew over the cuckoo's nest the next film is a genuine favorite of mine and that is Michael Mann's 2004 collateral starring Tom Cruise and Jamie Foxx in one of the best movies you'll ever see Tom Cruise in basically Jamie Foxx is a taxi driver that ends up taking hitman Vincent, Tom Cruise's character, on five stops in one night. Set in the LA streets all at night, it's perfect. The mood to this movie, the feel to it, fits my style brilliantly. I can't say much more. I've just seen this movie so many times. I used to watch it on my old iPod video many, many times, and I love it. This movie will never get old for me. It's a genuine classic, collateral. The next movie is one of the better crime dramas in the last 20 years, and that is Mark Scorsese, The Departed, starring Leo DiCaprio, Matt Damon, Jack Nicholson, Mark Wahlberg, Mark Sheen, and many more great supporting characters. This movie, I'm sorry to say, is better, in my opinion, than Goodfellas and Casino. I just like it more. I love the twists and turns this movie takes. All these characters are sort of against each other or for each other. Leo DiCaprio, this is one of his most memorable roles. And Jack Nicholson as the Frank, the crime boss. One of his best roles in the last 20 years. One of his last great roles. And this, again, just has that feel to it, the Scorsese feel that I love. And great soundtrack and just a wonderful, twisted movie in a way that are part of. This next movie is another genuine classic one of the greatest movies in cinema history, that is Francis Ford Coppola, 1972, The Godfather, starring the legendary actor Marlon Brando, Al Pacino, James Kahn, Robert Duvall, and Diane Keaton. 
this resembles what crime mafia family movies are all about and this is the best of that genre you'll never get anything better than this movie it's the best out of the trilogy for me even though godfather part two is brilliant movie but i just love brando in this film uh resembles everything i want in a mafia crime film the acting the moods the dialogue it has everything and is a genuine classic the godfather so now we come into my top five favorite movies of all time starting with a western the legendary movie directed by sergio leone the good the bad and the ugly starring clint eastwood eli wallach and lee van cleef in one of the most best cinematic movies of all time sergio leone his style you know i love it I've loved this movie from day one. It has everything. Three men during the Civil War going after the same pot of gold in a cemetery where each member has some piece of information and it ends up being in one of the best cinematic final duels of all time. And the music to this, Ennio Morricone, he is a master at this. And I just love this movie. It's a great, great Western. It holds up still today and it is a cinematic piece of art that's all you can say about this movie it is perfect the good the bad and the ugly but there's one western that is better than good bad and the ugly and that is the second movie in the dollars trilogy for a few dollars more starring clint eastwood lee van cleef and john maria valanti and the reason i like this one a little bit more than good bad and the ugly is the partnership and chemistry between Lee Van Cleef and Clint Eastwood, two bounty hunters going after Indio, John Marie Vellante, the psychopathic villain, uh, for different reasons. I don't know. I love the score in this one as well. And the story just just a little bit more than Good, Bad and the Ugly. But, hey, it's pretty hard to rate them. But I just love the spaghetti western style, the shootouts, the killings, the duos, just the... Everything in between, Klaus Kinski, so memorable in this as well as one of the henchmen of Indio. And this is a movie I come back to at least a couple of times a year and always will be my favourite Western. The next movie, number three, is one of the best crime heist drama films of all time. That is Michael Mann's 995 Heat, starring the legends Al Pacino and Robert De Niro pitted against each other. This is an example of what makes a great crime drama. Interesting characters, fantastic storytelling, and great supporting characters as well. Everyone is in this movie. You've got Val Kilmer, Tom Sizemore, Ashley Judd, John Voigt, just to name a few. I love the, What I love about this movie is that we get both sides of the coin. Al Pacino, the police detective, and why he's doing this, and also Robert De Niro's character and his reasons for doing what he's doing as far as doing all these bank robberies. The mood, the sound score, the feel to this movie. I just recently watched the 4K again. Loved it. This is a perfect movie in my opinion. I just have so many great memories of this. I can watch this any time. The pacing is brilliant. The the desperation between both characters. And you've, you're rooting for both of them. That's what I love about this movie. Heat is a genuine, genuine classic and one of the best of all time and should be watched by everyone. Number two, Martin Scorsese's very best, in my opinion. Robert De Niro's very best. That is none other than 1976 Taxi Driver. This movie is a prime example of watching a man whose mental health is declining. Travis Bickle, Robert De Niro, is a man who was honorably discharged from Vietnam and now spends his nights driving a taxi cab. This is just a perfect blend for me. I love characters that have inner monologues and that's what's great about this movie, all of Travis Bickle's narrations about what's going on in his mind. And I love movies that focus on one individual character and the psyche of that character. That's what really drew me to Taxi Driver. As I said, Martin Scorsese's very best, the supporting cast, Albert Brooks, Sybil Shepherd, a young Jodie Foster, all very brilliant in their roles. And Robert De Niro just... Just, this movie demonstrates why he's one of the living American acting legends. And yeah, I just draw to this character. It's very depressive in a way, this movie. And, you know, everything that Travis Bickle says and does just 
it's dark. It's a dark film, but it's one of the best in cinema history, in my opinion. And it's a movie I've come back to so many times. I can watch this movie any time of the day or night, and I just love it. And Taxi Driver is a genuine, genuine classic. It's probably not a big surprise what is number one. I've talked about it so often on my, um, my videos, but number one... Ryan Gosling, Nicholas Winning Refn, Drive. Um, what can I say about this movie? Um, for the very first moment, I just loved it. Um, I remember getting it recommended to me by my uncle, and first I thought, oh, this is probably one of those like Fast and Furious movies, but I just got captivated. It's only like 90 minutes, but just everything about this movie for me is perfect. Ryan Gosling, The Silent Driver, um, Carrie Mulligan is great in it, Albert Brooks, uh, Oscar Isaac, everyone plays their character so well. Got to mention the soundtrack, you got Kavinsky, College, I've been playing those songs for the last 10 years now since I've watched this movie, 15 years or whatever it is. Ah, just fantastic. And yeah, the mood, Nicholas Winding Refn just knows how to create that sort of like neo-noir neo -noir vibe, a um, lot of like, not a lot of dialogue in some scenes and just that mood and desperation and uh, you, again, uh, Nick Ryan Gosling, he doesn't play like the greatest, like he's kind of a semi a sociopath in a way. Uh, you don't know much about him, but as the movie goes along, you see this different side to him and uh, you kind of want him to have this relationship with Carrie Mulligan, but then you realize maybe he can't live that type of life. And uh, yeah, I don't know, again, kind of like Taxi Driver, I love focusing on one character and living through that character when you're watching these, uh, this movie. And uh, yeah, I don't know, I just love it. I, I can't say much uh, any more about it really. It's just a fantastic movie in my mind and my favorite of all time, Drive. Um, yeah. I. That's just the way it is for me. That is my top 20 favorite movies of all time. I hope you enjoyed this list. I certainly enjoyed uh, telling you that. Come on now, Skolda, Paul, Trini, all you guys, uh, Hoax, whoever it is, go out there and do it. Eastwood fan, if you want to do it as well. Anyone that watches this video, if you want to do a video response, I'm very happy to watch it. I'll be very excited to watch it because I love seeing what uh, everyone else has because it'll be very different to mine. You might have one or two similar ones, but I'm sure everyone else has very different top 20 lists. So there you have it. And let me know any other suggestions you have for future top 20 or top 10 lists. I'm very much happy to do it and something very exciting to do on this channel, I think. So that is it, guys. I'll see you next time. Take care for now. Sayonara. It's been a long, long four, four, four years. The old doubt to me said I couldn't do it. The old said I couldn't do it. Look at me now. Let me know.